All right, guys, Bolt here once again with a, another 1v1 ranked match that I did, I believe, yesterday at the moment of recording. And this is a really interesting one, and it's kind of a new strategy that I'm trying to, um, trying to, well, try out, I should say. And that is to play hyper-aggressive and quite risky as well. So kind of uh, both of the, uh, kind of, both extreme ends of the spectrum in one. And what do I mean with that? Well, we are playing as the US mechanized battle group, quite a capable battle group. Not something that I see a lot of people use very, very aggressively. And uh, I'm trying to kind of uh, make that work with these guys. So we have a lot of LRS teams. These are recon units, special forces, elite training, airborne, uh, basically everything you can imagine. Uh, they come with the M249 and the M14, so no anti-tank, but they're perfect for anti-infantry battles. And what am I doing with them? Well, I'm moving them up to the front line into both defensive positions and also offensive positions. So three of these squads are moving really, really far into the enemy's side of the zone here. And uh, what we're also doing is we're completely ignoring one flank. We're completely ignoring a flank. And that is both very risky, but could also really just make me win the game. It's that simple because our opponent here who is playing as a 35th airborne, so lots of Spetsnaz, is moving a lot of units onto that left sector, as you can see. A lot of units being moved in here, three squads in total, two squads going there, and we have a bunch of squads trying to get into those buildings. Um, meanwhile, I am basically moving 80% of all my units into the middle, and I just have one LRS on the right side to hold. Now, since I know what the 35th is made of, we know that it lacks AA. It has man pads in scrajets, but usually, well, other than that, it really doesn't have much. So what I'm doing is go for a heavy air presence early on. So we got two of these rocket cobras. We have two OH-58Cs to uh, battle against any airborne or uh, helicopters or whatever. We have a recon OH-58C as well. We have a, uh, a chaparral and to basically complement my LRS, we have Ranger teams also moving up, and these guys have the AT-4 and dual M249s, which is very, very powerful. So the first LRS team is already unloading here. These are the defensive ones that I have, while the units that I task with being very aggressive are moving forward. And here is why I like to use at least one or two helicopters in the beginning. It is to stop a charge like this that our opponent is performing here. Lots of these SPG-9 vehicles are just trying to rush forward and block any units that I might have here uh, with those recoilless guns that it has. Spetsnaz has moved up quite far as well and did manage to unload, but luckily we have two Cobras that are going to be uh, destroying that unit in no time, together with the OH-58C with the uh, minigun. It's actually surprisingly doing a lot of damage. Now over here we have the three LRS teams, so that is a lot of M249s and the M14s, so that is definitely built for anti-infantry purposes. That poor Desaniki squad is not going to survive long either with the Cobras. He does call in a MiG-23 ML to take out one of them. Does the OH actually hit it? The OH did actually hit it and then the other OH took it out. So these OH-58Cs are really really good. They're actually stupidly good. On the move, 60% accuracy. So you can just move them out in the front of your armies. Now the M14s actually managed to destroy that command that he put into that zone and we do manage to get this ranger team into this area here to actually to actually have some anti-tank weapons to hold that area. We move our own command into the zone, the M60. It does get fired at by the Metis team there, but luckily we have smoke and good cover there and the Cobra takes care of that unit. The large amount of recon that we have is so, so powerful. We see everything in this area. Now we don't see these guys, they're in cover, but we see a lot. And look at how much AA he is now buying. We have Iglas and Screjets, we have the ZU-23s being purchased. That is, you know, that's 60 points each, so that's 180 points right there. And uh, this guy is, uh, so that's uh, 220, 270 points of AA being purchased. And that is also a really good way to uh, play the game, is by forcing the enemy to invest in certain units. Um, we already fell back with our helicopters. They're just chilling. They've already done their job. We're really not going to be able to do that attack again. That is already what I expect. Uh, so we're going back to normal gameplay, let's see. And we have some rangers moving up to the flank, just to act as a tripwire infantry. In the case that he does push over here, this guy will take on, you know, uh, will be the first contact, and then we can uh, act accordingly. Now on the right side, 
uh, Spetsnaz OP squad has made it into this sector as well. I did kind of expect it to happen. I didn't actually see it, but I did expect it. So I move in this Ranger, I unload it and just move it up there uh, slowly and carefully. And uh, right now we're kind of just uh, we're kind of just waiting. We have another command moving up to the right, a command Patton and a regular M60. They're going to be tasked with taking over that zone. And uh, in the meantime, I do try to engage the Spetsnaz OP in this building here. Now we do get into the building, but there's a lot of Desaniki back there. That is also being a little bit of a problem there. The Cobra is literally all out of rockets and 20 millimeters, uh, which is quite quite interesting. We're gonna fall back with that guy and get it nicely rearmed, repaired, and refitted. Now the LRS here, they're not the best at holding like really far out because they don't have any anti-tank. So you do need to supplement these guys, and that is going to be the job of these M60s. And also, we're buying some more Ranger teams to help out, and also AT4 squads. Now the Spetsnaz there, versus three or uh, one LRS and two Ranger teams, it's really not going to do well. That Spetsnaz is just going to disappear really, really quickly, especially since it's only a four-man squad. So uh, yeah, rest in peace Spetsnaz. So really just not going for the left side proved to be amazing for us. So that is one Spetsnaz of 80 points, uh, that's 45, so just quick math, uh, let's say 130, plus that is 210, plus that is 270, uh, 330, 370, 370 points or so, let's say 350, being spent on a flank that I completely ignored, and these units didn't really take advantage of that, and they didn't really push up, I, they're still not really pushing up on that flank. Now M60 here has captured the zone, and I'm just playing really aggressive with this. I know that he has probably some Spetsnaz, we did destroy the Spetsnaz OP, so I'm kind of just uh, hoping that he doesn't have another one. And we just moved that command into that zone to try to capture it. A plane flew over, MiG-25, but we do have some good AA, two Chaparrels, and an IHawk. The supply here is keeping these guys nicely resupplied. This guy is a little bit, uh, well, almost out, he has one more missile left. Not to worry, we have more supplies on the way. Now my LRS here on the front did get bombed by that MiG-25. So these guys are falling back and are going to get resupplied here. M60 is moving up as well. Immediately deploy smoke the moment we see that ATGM trail. And then we move up to get into range with the cannon. After the first one, if you just keep moving with your tanks, you will get into range and you will be able to engage that unit. Now unfortunately we missed twice. He does hit us, but with the second volley we take it out. The LRS are now moving forward to be very aggressive and try to spot as much as possible while the M60s are standing by to take on anything. Now speaking of Rangers here, we did call them in earlier to try to resupply or reinforce the LRS, but since the building cover is gone, uh, these guys are going to just be tasked with unloading right there instead. There you go, M60s are spotted. We do lose one of our M60s, somehow that ATGM blew up behind us but destroyed the tank. Uh, probably just a graphical glitch, but a uh, nice little Metis hit there. We do deal a lot of uh, suppression on that guy, but uh, still, they're really, really accurate. So Metis teams are just the way to go. Now we do lose the LRS there out in the open, this guy is still up and running. And we have more M60s here to give some give some more uh, suppressive fire on this Aniki Metis teams there. Really good tanks, 90 points. I remember these being cheaper, but that might just be my memory being absolute dog water. But uh, 90 points for an M60 is actually not bad. It's a really good tank, high rate of fire, you know, 15 AP, not the worst. Good accuracy when uh, when static. It's just a great unit to use. Now we do call it an A10, since we did spot that command here, we actually do have eyes on it because of our amazing recon coverage there, and we do destroy that thing and the spread jet there, but we actually lose the A10 to the amount of CU-23s, that kind of surprised me, how well they did. That is quite amazing. Now on the right side, we have the secure, or we have this zone secured, the enemy or our opponent is getting a command in there. But as you can see, that also made him invest a lot of points onto the right side. So we have a BVK command and a BV moving in. 
Spetsnaz and Su-23 also being spawned in there. Um, meanwhile, my only objective was just to capture it. We move in the Cobra, we actually just right-click it over there to make it move and fire on the move. And we actually destroy the Scratchet and the Igla team with the Cobra. And that is how I think helicopters should be used if you do use them uh, aggressively. Just to right-click, make sure its path is going to go over the uh, opponents, and that way it'll fire on the move. Another plane taken out. Not quite sure which plane that was. Can we can we can we tell from the body of it? Probably MiG-23 or something. Is it? I'm not quite sure. But yeah, right now plus three, so we are doing really really well. The aggressive push into the middle sector, ignoring the left, definitely did wonders. There is a lot of Spetsnaz over here though. Two regular Spetsnaz and uh, the Saniki team here with really good anti-tank weapons. Now. I did notice the Spetsnaz team before, that's why I'm moving the M60 up really aggressively. But that guy, if he gets a side shot on us, we are basically doomed. So that is not the best. A little toss up right there. Now the Spetsnaz there is out of range with its incendiary rockets. So that is actually quite a good deal here for us. But the Desaniki team is now moving in, together with the Spetsnaz and the BMD, and that is going to be quite bad for King's health right there. Also the BMD itself can uh, destroy this tank no problem. Getting a few side shots in like that uh, destroys it without any issues. So we do have this Cobra here, basically out of rockets, still good on the Gatling guns. We just move it up here together with the Scout and we call in a couple of AT4 squads uh, to take over. And these guys, as I said, I'm keeping them very, very mobile. I'm just moving them left to right, just all over the place. And as you can see here, in we're actually in neutral zone. There's really not much left from uh, Azad's side or POV. And uh, all he's getting is more ZU-23s. Really good, apparently, at destroying an A-10. So I don't blame him. But um, that opening attack really did some numbers on his forces. I just wanted to highlight that with this video here. So we get the rest of our helicopters all grouped up to clean up the left side here, so OH-58Cs are moving up. We also have the Stinger variant here, uh, they were kind of using as a makeshift recon. We have also called in the Tow Cobras. One of our Cobras was shot down earlier, but this guy is still alive, and we have two Tow Cobras here to take it over. And even if we're not using the rockets or the ITOs, the Gatling is good enough. It's really, really powerful. Spetsnaz is spotted right there. And that basically means the end of those guys. Because of all of the rockets here. And there goes that. Spetsnaz and Desaniki still left on the left side there, but that is not really going to be a major issue. What is a bit of a problem are these two Desaniki teams, who have really good anti-tank, and the T-64 BV itself. So we did spot these guys coming up, but I'm keeping these M60s exactly where they are. I'm not gonna move them up anywhere. There we go. The Tow Cobra actually pushes these guys into the forest. We spot the BMD-2, we destroy him in one shot. These T-64 BV is going to tap our M60, but we did already land the hit, and with the second one, we managed to finish the job, but now we're gonna get destroyed. Or we're gonna get engaged by the Desantnikis. We're trying to get out of there, but uh, it's not the easiest job as you can see here. So the ZU-23 is unloaded, but yeah, against overwhelming firepower that we have on the left with all these helicopters, it is kind of just difficult for him to now bounce back. I would say the lack of man pads and scratch jets is kind of his downfall. Um, the ZU-23s are good at, you know, supplementing your AA. But on their own, they're only going to be good against one helicopter, as you can see right here. Otherwise, they're kind of a waste. Now, we have a really good lineup, as you can see. We have some mechanized rifles now lining up the front line. Basically, tasked with waiting and seeing what the opponent does. And we have some more mechanized rifles on the left with the Dragon 2 launchers. So on the left, we now have our fire teams. These guys are going to just be tasked with defending the area. We're not really pushing up. We just want to clean up any infantry that might still be in the area and uh, just hold it. 
Now I do have a couple of bootcamp videos that detail how to use like logistics and all of that and well this is a really good case of how to use it. We don't have an FSP, we have a good amount of points extra that we don't really need uh, right now. So what do I do? Well I just call in supplies. Whenever I do have units that I don't really need for anything specific, I just call in a buttload of supplies. And if we just look at where these units are going, well, all over the place. We have some going to the left to resupply that tow cobra. We have a couple here to act as like a small scale a supply dump for my helicopters there. And we have a couple going to the front line to keep my mechanized rifles good. And we have one more going to the right side towards the ranger to keep him uh, nice and resupplied. And we have one standing with the IHawk. So really good kind of um, supply situation going on here. I was actually quite happy to see that. So yeah, we are still plus three. I mean, you can probably already guess how this game is going to end, but it really just shows how you can be aggressive with just LRS teams, one or two helicopters, and an M60 pattern here and there. Like, playing really, really limited in terms of the types of units you have, and playing it quite risky with one of the flanks by not really attacking it aggressively, while defending another one and then being really aggressive in the third zone, that, you know, that can really just um, d determine the outcome really, really quickly. And this was a good example of that. Normally, if I were to also put units on the left, uh, put like a couple more squads on the right, I really would be lightly defending the middle. And his push with those SPG vehicles and the Spetsnaz would have obliterated the middle. I don't think I would have been able to hold that, especially since if I played it, you know, quote unquote, in the normal way, I wouldn't have these helicopters to stop that attack. So MiG-23 being called in on the left, we get a beautiful hit with, I believe, the Shepherd, no, the IHawk. And uh, unfortunately for us, we don't get another hit, but that guy is out of commission for quite some time. There we go. We're finally seeing some Iglas in Scrajets. These are probably one of my favorite units in the game. The Iglas, they are not great, but they are forward deployed. The Scrajets, they're also not great, but they are forward deployed. And together, it's an okay AA piece. Perfect for area denial. They're probably not really going to shoot down much, but if you have a couple of these guys, they will piss off any aircraft that comes into range or comes close enough. And in my opinion, that is really the main uh, purpose of those guys. So we see a huge amount of BMD-2s here with the Sanikis making a desperate attempt on our right flank here. These guys are basically tasked with moving straight into our zone to try to recapture it since there's only about 187, 84 points left uh, before we are victorious. So he really needs to make a move here uh, sometime soon. A T-64 BV command is being called in and neutralizes the middle zone, neutralizes the game, but this basically triggers my all-out assault on that middle sector. We move in the mechanized rifles, the rangers, these mechanized rifles on the right side. We have our M60 moving up, we have our tow cobra engaging, and uh, we're just gonna immediately stop this from being a major issue, because as soon as the Desanikis also get in the zone, it could be a problem, for sure. There you go, Iglo's moving in, getting a nice hit on the tow cobra, and this guy's basically going to be out of commission for a little bit there. Cobras being a really nice fire support, basically staying at max rocket range. We call in two F-111 uh, Fs with all the bombs you can ever imagine. Does a decent amount of damage on the tank, doesn't really destroy it, but we do get the man pad over there and the mechanized rifles are now moving in towards that command. We have another A-10 coming in. Doesn't really spot any targets at the moment, which is quite unfortunate for that guy. BMD 2s moving in with Desanikis. They're going to be met with my mechanized rifles, but unfortunately for us, we don't have close range anti tank. But unfortunately for him, the M60 destroys the command tank over there. So on the right side, we did do a push, but I didn't really pay attention here. So these uh, flash units are getting absolutely smacked by the T64. And unfortunately, our AT4 squads do not really do that much damage on the frontal armor of the T64. 
it's okay damage, but you know, you need a lot of hits in order to destroy that thing. And that's just not really gonna happen. So here you can see the Screshats at work, Toe Cobras. Basically don't stand a chance, to be honest, against that kind of firepower. You do get land a few good hits there, um, but with the amount of AA he has, our helicopters are literally unfrequently shut down. Now, the last desperate push here with BMD-2s. One lone M60 trying to hold that down, uh, which is not going to end well for the M60, but before that actually becomes a reality, our opponent surrenders. Good game. Definitely does show how powerful these Cobras can be if used right. All of these UAZs for SPG-9s, if I didn't have helicopters, they would have absolutely annihilated my units because I did not have any anti-tank units there to begin with. It was all LRS teams and, you know, MAMP, like uh, uh, anti-air, uh, supplies, etc. If I played it the regular way, I would have also lost the left flank because Spetsnaz and Forest, just, just a no-brainer, really. And if he played it a bit more aggressive also when he noticed that I didn't go for one of those flanks or he just wasn't really seeing any of my units, he would have done quite a bit of damage. So uh, definitely a good learning experience there. But I do hope that you enjoyed this match and I will have some more videos coming up very, very shortly. It's just been a bit rough in terms of uh, content these few days. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys back soon. Take care.